hand. Amen. Praise God. Amen. How I many you know God is great and he's greatly to be praised? With Bible in hand, if you would open up to, I want you to open up to the book of Hebrews chapter 25, uh, chapter 10 rather, in the Word of God. As you're turning there, I just have a few announcements to make quickly. Amen. Last uh, Wednesday night, we had an awesome Bible study here at the church. There were seven of us. And as you know, the uh, Bible studies are conducted upstairs in my um, office. And we sit around an um, oval conference table. We have some great conversations. Amen. And as we go through the Word of God, First John is the book we're studying right now. And I'll tell you what, uh, it's a real blessing to be here. Amen. So I just want to encourage you all to come on out um, to Wednesday night Bible studies. We're here at the church every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Amen. Bible studies usually last about an hour or so. So just come out and be blessed. Amen. Praise God. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Also, this coming Friday is March 20th. It is the first day of spring. Somebody say spring. Amen. And um, the movie, Do You Believe, is coming out to theaters everywhere. I have a poster that I have posted in the back on the, um, on the welcome table, uh, bulletin board, and it talks about the different theaters that that is coming out to. I would highly, highly recommend for everybody here, and also watching by television, amen, to uh, see this movie called Do You Believe. It's an excellent, excellent movie concerning salvation, concerning t uh, uh, different people's lives and so forth, and I'd encourage you highly to go there, amen, to the theaters. Also, two weeks from today, Sunday, March 29th, is Palm Sunday, and that's uh, starting the Christian Film Festival, and that's going to be at the Showcase uh, Cinema um, in Lawrence, in uh, Massachusetts, and um, looking forward to that. The whole schedule's out there, again, on the... Um, Welcome table, so if you want to go ahead and take one of those uh, brochures home, it's got the schedule, put it on your refrigerator and see as many movies as possible. One of the highlighted movies um, that I highly recommend for you to see is God's Not Dead. God's Not Dead is going to be shown for free at the, um, at the Christian Film Festival. Excellent, excellent movie. If you've been praying for somebody to be saved, buy them. Uh, you don't even have to buy them a ticket if you go to the uh, Christian Film Festival because it's free. But just bring them with you, and that movie itself will share the word with them. Amen. Praise God. Excellent movies coming up. Also, the newsletters are here. If you did not get a newsletter, Sister Agnes will give you one right now, last week. Amen. Could you raise your hand? And um, if you did not get a newsletter last week, we passed them out. Raise your hand and she'll give you one now. Newsletters are very important to read. Uh, they fill you up on information of what's going on in the ministry and so forth as well. Amen. The new daily breads are out. The March daily breads are out right now, again, on the welcome table. Take one of these home. Those of you watching my television, if you don't have a daily bread, we'll mail you one for free. Just write in or email us, and we'll go ahead and send you one. Amen. These are excellent devotional booklets, and um, we appreciate this ministry. Praise God. And uh, just to stay in the Word of God. How many of you know when we go to sleep at night, then we wake up the next morning, we are responsible for being proactive in focusing on the Lord? Isn't that right? Things aren't just going to fall out of the sky and God starts speaking to you. You have to, as a Christian, as a believer, you've got to make up your mind in your schedule to get up early and to spend some time alone with God in His Word, reading these devotional books and so forth, and in prayer. That's up to you, amen? And how many of you know that's very, very important? The Lord tells us, give us this day our daily bread. So not only speaking of our provisions concerning food and sustenance and money to pay the bills, He's also, I believe, talking about His Word. He gives it to us every day. Just like in the wilderness, he had manna fall from heaven every single day. But it's up to you to bend down and pick up the manna and put it in your plate and eat it. The Word of God, every one of us have a Bible at our homes. It's up to us to pick it up every day and read it. Amen? To fill ourselves with the Word of God. Amen? Praise God. I'll tell you what. If I had a little graph up here or a little chart, I would show you that whatever you get away from God's Word, what's going to happen is... Fear, anxiety, insecurities, and worries are going to increase in your life, and you're going to feel worse and worse and more and more negative. But the more you're in the Word of God, the more you come to church, the more you're focused on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the opposite is going to happen. All these fear, anxieties, worries are going to go downward, and your faith is going to increase in the Lord. Why? You're not focused on your problem anymore. You're focused on the problem solver. And your problem solver is so much bigger than all those fears and worries and anxieties. Amen? So praise God. I, as this, this past week, I've been really um, studying a lot concerning the word encouragement. How many of you know all of us need encouragement? Amen? Every single one of us need a word of encouragement in our lives at different times. Amen? 
And how many know we as Christians are responsible to give those words of encouragement to one another? So what I'd like to do in the Word of God is to take the Word and take a good look at this word encouragement. And I want to just challenge you with a question, church, before I start this message today. Are you being encouraging to other people in your life? Secondly, are you expecting something back from people that you minister to through the vehicle of encouragement? Because if we're expecting something back as ministers of the gospel, we have the wrong motive. Amen? How many know we've got to go ahead and encourage other people, whatever they're going through in life, whatever the situation is, amen? And how many know, praise God, whatever we sow, we reap. What you do for God, God is going to do for you. What you do for somebody else to bless them in ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ, God is going to turn around and he's going to bless you as a result. He may not even use that same person. He's going to use somebody else or whatever the case is. But how many of you know God always comes through? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 in the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm reading the New Living Translation today in the Word. Amen. How many of us are excited in the Lord? Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, reading verses 23 down to verse 25 in the Word of God. The writer of Hebrews, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says these words in the Bible. Without wavering... Let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Think of ways to encourage one another to outbursts of love in good deeds. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I just ask you, Spirit of God, to speak through me. I pray, Lord God, that you just have your perfect way and will in the message today. Help us, Lord, to know the joy of encouragement. Help us, Lord, to be encouraged by others and by yourself, Lord God, as well as for us to encourage other people. Help us, Lord, when we come to church, think of ways to encourage one another. Help, help us, Lord God, to be ministers of your word, to go out in this lost and dying world and to share your word with other people to give them a word of encouragement and a word of prayer through whatever they're going through, Lord God, to tell them that we truly do care about them through our actions and not only our words. And Lord God, we just thank you for that, Father. We just magnify your mighty precious name. Speak to us in this message, we pray, and in Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. You know, how many know it's a good idea to take down notes whenever, we're, um, whenever the word of God is shared? One thing that I do is I always have a little piece of paper in my Bible whenever somebody else is going to be preaching or teaching the Word of God, and I take down notes, amen? And later on, I look at those notes, and I see how God really spoke to me through that message, amen? So it's a good idea to take notes, and if you yourself ever want an outline concerning what I'm preaching from when I prepare these outlines, by all means, ask me after the message, and I can email. It's easiest for me to actually email this to you, or I can print a hard copy and give it to you as well. For your enrichment in the Word of God. Amen? Praise God. And those of you watching by television, just write info at changinglivesChristianChurch.com. It will send you out a, uh, a free outline as well. Praise God. The Living Translation of the Bible says it this way, concerning what we just read in the New Living Translation. It says, Now we can look forward to the salvation God has promised us. There is no longer any room for doubt, and we can tell others that salvation is ours. But there is no question that he will do what he says. In response to all he has done for us, let us outdo each other in being helpful and kind to each other and in doing good. Let us not neglect our church meetings, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. Church, how many of you know there's going to be a lot of disappointed people when the rapture of the church comes? I'll tell you what, one of the most scariest things that any, any believer that actually thinks that they're saved, but they're really not, is when the rapture of the church comes and they are left behind. Wouldn't that be a scary thing if the rapture came right now and any one of us were left in this building? That would be horrendously scary, amen? How many of you know the Word of God tells us that we have to know Jesus personally, not only know His Word, but know Him personally as our personal Lord and Savior in order to get to heaven? We have to know and understand, church, that, yes, the Lord's going to come back soon. We don't know what day, but the best advice I can give anybody is be ready every day and you can't go wrong. Somebody say glory to God. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. How many of you know with encouragement, 
the word love comes into play. The best definition I feel in the Word of God concerning love is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the Word of God. Amen? In um, 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul talks about love, what love is. He talks about love is not something that we can just be used at our gifts or, or yell and scream or jump up and down or whatever the case is. The Bible says if we have no love, we are nothing. The very root or core in the Christian life is loving other people. That needs to be what our true motive is. Why do we want to share the Word of God with others? Why? Because we love them. We want to see them in eternity with us. Why do we want to see these pews filled in this church? Because we love people. We don't want to see empty pews. We want to see people going to heaven. Over the last 20 years, as I've been a pastor in the ministry, I have seen people come into the church, and I've seen um, some people pass away and die. And it's good going to their funerals knowing where they are at. Because the Bible says to be absent from, as a Christian, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? And it's good to know that I had the opportunity to minister to those folks for a, for a period of time in their lives. Amen? And how many know that God is an awesome, awesome God? Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his precious blood. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 is probably the best-known scripture out of the entirety of the Word of God. You see it at the New England Patriots games, somebody holding up John 3.16 in a poster. You know what I mean? In the, side, in, the, um, in the bleachers and so forth. You see John 3.16 on people's bumper stickers. You see John 3.16 written in snow banks with all the snow we've been having lately and so forth. Amen. John 3.16. But my question is this. What are you doing with John 3.16? Is it just words that sound pretty good? Is it just something that, well, yeah, I guess God exists and he's up there and, you know, he does love me and, you know, I guess I believe, I'm not quite sure. But the question is this, are you, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? By accepting him into your life, by saying with your mouth, Jesus, I receive you into my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. I want a relationship with God through you. Amen? I want to live the rest of my life for you. I want to talk to you every day through prayer. I want to have you on my conscience and on my mind every day. I want to go ahead and put my faith into action because faith without action is what? Is dead. I want to find a local church that I can attend on a regular basis, that I can support with my prayers, that I can support with my finances, that I can support with ministry, that I can support encouraging the folks over at that church. Amen? I want to go ahead and put my faith into action that every day I pick up your word and I read it before I start my busy day. I want to put my faith into action to, to not even have to tell people that I'm a Christian, but people through my actions will see he's convicted. He is guilty of being a believer. There's something different about him. There's something different about her. There's just something that just is awesome about that person. Amen? See, in the Christian life, we shouldn't have to go around with our bumper stickers and carrying our Bibles in order to show the world that we're believers, but with the way we act and with the way we relate to people, they should see automatically there's something different about that guy. There's something different about that woman. Amen? They seem to have the joy of the Lord. Amen? Praise God. We should be so salty and full of flavor in the things of God, that people should be coming up to us and saying, I want to ask you something. What is it about you? Why do you have a smile on your face all the time? Why do you seem to be so full of contentment? Why when, thing, when people are gossiping at the workplace, you don't partake in that? You suddenly go to the ladies' room or the men's room and excuse yourself out of that conversation. Why is it that you don't all stressed out all the time? Then you can share the word of God with people. Amen? One person one time walked up to a Christian and he says, all right, what are you on? The Christian says, what are you talking about? What kind of drugs are you on? <laughs> he says, I'm on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Was that a new drug? No. <laughs> he said, I, I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I'll tell you what, I take the gospel pills so I don't have to take regular pills. <laughs> Somebody say glory be to God. Amen. 
The local church, I cannot emphasize enough, it is extremely important to one's faith in the Lord. Extremely important. You cannot underestimate or discount that at all. Amen? Praise be to God. The Apostle Paul tells us not to neglect our church meetings as some people do, but encourage, what do we hear in church for? To encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. One of the neat things about the church is this. Every different person has different gifts and, and, and different talents that the Lord has placed upon every one of us. Amen? Um, when I came in the church today, my whole body walked in. I didn't leave my two arms home in walking without arms. I didn't leave my two legs home. My whole body came in because my whole body has different functions. The members of my body have different functions. When we as a church get together, that's why you'll never see anything happen in a Christian's life if they stay home and they're not attending and assembling together. Because they're missing all the other gifts and talents that other people have. They may be specialized in one talent, but I'll tell you what, that's not going to go ahead and make miracles happen in your life. When we all get together, we're, all, we're together as a body of Christ, and that's when the Spirit of God moves. Because everybody's using their giftings and their talents together in the name of Jesus. Amen? Praise God. Church, I mean, know that love is essential to our emotional, physical, mental, and social well-being. It is a fact that people who are able to give and receive love recover more quickly from the, even in their illnesses. Amen? If you're sick... And if people are going and they're praying for you and you're in the hospital and you have some kind of a disease and people are praying for you and they're, and they're going ahead and encouraging you and they're loving you and you know they're genuinely loving you, you're, you're going to um, um, recover much, much more quicker as a result of that love being shown to you. It's a fact, amen? There was a study done and um, um, they had some babies in another country years and years ago and these little babies they left as a, as a horrible experiment but they left these babies with absolutely no affection, no kindness, no mom talking to them or singing to them or holding them or caressing them, amen, or touching them or praying for them, anything. They just left them on their own. The babies ended up by dying because of a lack of love and affection. Let me tell you something. Love and affection and encouragement is so extremely important to the way that God has created every one of us, that none of us can do without that. People in this world, excuse me, that we live in a full, some people are full of hate, and some people are so selfish and self-centered that they don't see that, and they have miserable, miserable lives as a result of that. They're always negative, always, always talking against people and so forth. Why? Because they don't have any love, amen? They don't give love and they don't receive love, amen? Praise God. We have to know and understand, amen? The Bible says in the Word of God that, that concerning love, believers are to follow the way of love. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says, let love be your highest goal. How many of you know that love needs to be our highest goal, church, amen? But you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. What else does the Bible say about love? It says to do everything in love. What's our motive? To, to do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16 and 14 says, and do everything with love. You know, when you go to the supermarket, you need to go to the supermarket and buy your groceries in love. Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about love in society. If somebody is ahead of you and they, it's a 12 items or, or less cash register, amen, and you want to get in there and get out quick, and they got 25 items sitting there, don't worry about it. Get rid of, cast down those negative thoughts in the name of Jesus. Don't they understand that I'm in a rush? Don't they understand? Look at that. What, can't you count? What, are you stupid? What, did you flunk math class in the first grade? All these kind of thoughts go through your head. But you've got to take those thoughts and cast them down in the name of Jesus and say, I'm not going to worry about it. Amen? amen? You're in the register, amen, cash register, whatever the case is. A cashier starts up a conversation. Somehow share the love of God with those people. Amen? Praise God. How many of you know we're at different places for different reasons at different times? And our master has us in the right place at the right time. And he wants us to share his word, amen, with that love, amen. Praise be to God. I'm so blessed when I go to the, uh, and I don't usually mention certain um, businesses, but when I go to the Enterprise Bank, who is who we have our church loan through in uh, Methuen on uh, Broadway, every time I drive up to make a deposit, usually I do that on Mondays, um, the, ca the, uh, the cashiers always look at me and say, how are you doing, pastor? How in the world they know I'm a pastor? I have no idea, but praise God. 
They treat me with respect. And you know, you see places like that and you know you're making an impact somehow in this lost and dying world and in our community. That's what we're here for, to make an impact, amen, in our community, praise God. How I many you know, church, that we need to do everything in love? The Bible also says to serve one another in love. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 in the Word of God. It says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Last Wednesday night, we had a very interesting conversation at the uh, Bible study. And we were talking about how our day would start without, without really getting into the Word of God and, and putting God first in our day, and how stressful that day sometime, sometimes becomes because we didn't have time for God in the morning. When we go ahead and focus on the Lord and focus on His Word and focus on prayer and focus on our devotions in the morning, amen, the, the Bible says, early in the morning, I have sought thee. Early in the morning, Jesus went out in Mark chapter 1, verse 35 in the Word of God. Early, early in the morning, well before daylight, He went up in the mountains to pray. If we're going to follow how Jesus was or be like Him, we need to start our day off with God after we wake up. And if you have a mindset, well, I'll get to, I'll get to my devotions. I, I absolutely, I'll get to them sometime today. I guarantee the devil's going to make sure you don't get time to get to your devotions. You're going to go to bed that night and be too tired, and all of a sudden, even if you pick up your Bible, you're going to be falling asleep before you can even read a page. Amen? How many of you know the church? The Bible says that, that, that as Christians, we have, we, have this, we have a gift called self-discipline. One of the fruit called self-discipline. Somebody say self-discipline. You see, we make our schedule the way we want to, amen? And how many of you know we've got to put God into that schedule and put him first in everything? I just want to encourage you, church, amen? To live a life of love. How many of you know we've got to live a life of love? Ephesians 5, the next chapter in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. It said, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God, Amen? We've got to speak the truth in love to people. Ephesians 4.15 goes on to say, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his, of his body, the church. How I many you know we've got to put on love? Amen? Somebody say, put on love. How many guys, uh, Brother Aki, brother, brother Alex, and all you guys here, how, how many of you like to get a new suit? Zeth, a new, a new suit. Amen? You just buy it, you know, you put on those new threads, and how do you feel? You feel pretty good. Why? Because you just bought a new suit, you know, you smell the newness of the suit, you look pretty good, you look in the mirror and go, you know, just combing your hair back a little bit, you know what I mean? And you look pretty good. Why? You just got on a new suit. Well, the Bible tells in the same way as you put clothes on, we have to put love on. Somebody say put love on, Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15 says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love. Notice it says above all in verse 14. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Sometimes we get into doing certain things sometimes, and, and I think in, you know, in habits and things that we do in our lives... We, 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 we do those things so much that we lose sight of loving other people all around us. What happens if we're in our bedroom, we're doing our devotions, and one of our kids knocks on our door in the bedroom? And then you go and open up the door and say, Don't you know I'm doing my devotions? <laughs> Isn't that kind of an oxymoron? We're in there spending time with God doing devotions, yet we're biting our kids' heads off because they're disturbing us. Amen? You know, we have to know and understand, amen, that how many you know we've got to walk in love? Why do we do the things that we do anyway, amen, as Christians? The motive has to be to bring people to Christ. The motive has to be to be ministers of the gospel. What does that mean? To be about our Father's business, to be like Jesus, to share the Word of God with people, to love people through Christ, amen? That's what we're here for. That's why we're on the earth, amen? We have to, be, to pursue love as well. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living, 
faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. As we mentioned earlier, we've got to spur one another on to love. Hebrews 10 and 24. Let us think of ways to motivate one another of acts and love and good works. You know, I've always told Christians, I says, don't put a bumper sticker on your car if you're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, give people a certain gesture. If they cut you off, or if they don't treat you too good when you're driving, or if they take your parking space when you had your direction on, somebody just jumps in front of you and takes it. Amen? How I many you know we have to know and understand, praise God? We have to be Christians, amen, and let the light of the Lord show through us. We've got to love not only in words, but in actions and truth. 1 John 3.18 tells us, Dear children, let's not merely say we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Amen? We have, to, we have to be controlled by the Holy Spirit and to bear the fruit, which is love. Now, how, do you get, can, how, do you, how are you controlled by the Holy Spirit? Amen? You put your mind on the things of God. Amen? You have your mind. Don't, don't let the flesh control you. Amen? But let the Spirit of God control you. The Bible says in Galatians 5 and 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. Notice love is at the top of the first nine. Amen? Top of the nine, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Amen? Church, how many know love is so important? Amen? God is concerned that we continually grow and mature in this love. Three times in Paul's epistles and once in Peter's writings are we told to continue to grow in love. Now let me ask you a question. I want you to think about this. Is love fact or is it a feeling? Two people that fall in love. Oh, I just love him so much. I just feel love for him so much. When bad times come in your life, are you still going to love him? Did you make a decision to love him? Or are you just based on feelings and emotions? The Bible says God made a distinctive fact. When he said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world. He wasn't all, you know, fuzzy with feelings and everything. Oh, my feelings are so something else. I'm going to love them. He made a decision to love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Love is a fact. Feelings will follow the fact. Lord, you tell me to love that person who's my enemy? I can't do that. I just you see, we're thinking about the feelings. I can't have feelings for that person. I, I, you know, I'll tell you what, in the flesh, I want to see, I lay hands on them suddenly, and I'm not talking about praying for them. I want to lay hands on them suddenly. You follow me? But if you make a fact and a decision, the Bible tells me, I forgive that person for offending me, and it's a fact. I confess, I love them in the name of Jesus, and I am going to forgive them, and that's it. Right now, as I observe, the body of Christ is too much into feelings and they're not into fact and truth. If we study upon the, upon the promises of God's word and confess those promises in the name of Jesus, and when we have financial problems, we say, Lord, your word says that, that if I tithe, you will open up the windows of heaven and you'll pour out so much of a blessing to me that I only have room enough to contain it. Amen? You take a checkbook and you put it on Malachi 3 and you say, Lord, this is what your word says. This is my checkbook. These are the financial difficulties I'm having. This is not my problem. It is yours because I've given my life to you. Some people go to churches as a result of just feeling the goosebumps instead of fact as far as the word of God and truth goes. Now, don't get, me, don't get me wrong. If you're excited in Jesus, praise God, you should have all the feelings in the world and jump up and down and praise and worship him, clap your hands and magnify his name. I'll tell you what, when the New England Patriots, amen, when, uh, when, uh, when Butler caught that interception, when there was just a few seconds left in the game on the one yard line, amen, from the Seahawks, let me tell you something. If you're a Patriots fan, you weren't going to go, hmm, so nice. Okay, they won. Let me shut the TV off. I'm going to bed. Even, even Agnes, who's not, she's a Patriots fan, but boy, I'll tell you what, she shook the house when that butler caught that ball. Oh, we won! Yeah! <laughs> Praise God! Amen? You can hear the whole neighborhood. Amen? How many of you know that Jesus scores a touchdown every day? 
He's always catching interceptions from the enemy. When the devil throws something at you that you can't handle, Jesus intercepts it in the name of Jesus. Amen? The devil says, you're not going to have a job, Espy, and you say, Jesus says, he is my provider. The devil says, Brother Aki, oh, things are going to get worse in your life. You say, no, God is going to come through for me. Amen? Amen? You say, guess what? Things aren't going too good in the job, but God is going to make it better. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You see, we have authority over the devil, and one major, major weapon he has against us is when we don't realize using it against him. Let me tell you something. If you start binding and rebuking the enemy in the name of Jesus, he'll be running. Brother Ray Chase came to my office last week and, uh, after Bible study on Wednesday, and Brother Kevin was there as well. And he says, uh, Brothers, can you pray for me? We, the three of us joined hands in a circle, and we prayed, and we were binding and rebuking the devil in the name of Jesus. After we prayed, I shook my head, and I walked away, and I said, I'd hate to be the devil right now. Because <laughs> he just went flying. <laughs> Praise God. How many know you have to use that authority? If a person is poor and they're starving to death and they're homeless, but yet they have a $100 bill in their back pocket that somebody put in it and they don't realize it's in there, they're going to be going through dumpsters in order to look for food. Yet they can take that $100 and they can go to Friday's and have delicious prime rib or whatever they want to have. All of us have more than a $100 bill spiritually in our back pockets because Jesus placed it there the day you were saved. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's about time, church, we stop letting the devil have his way in our lives. He doesn't belong in your checkbook. He doesn't belong in your, in your workplace. He doesn't belong in your family. He doesn't belong in your church. He doesn't belong in your car. He doesn't belong anywhere at all that you are in the name of Jesus. Amen? And sometimes I think the devil's having a little party with his demons and he's just laughing it off. See what happened to that Christian that I... <laughs> I just went ahead and gave him this fiery dot, and he bought it. <laughs> and I think demons have parties just joking around with believers that really don't believe in the Word of God. And they just throw their little fiery darts, like Ephesians chapter 6 talks about in the Word of God, talking about spiritual warfare. He just throws a little thought, and Christians act on it, and they believe the lie. Instead of binding and rebuking that, that's not of God, that's not in the Word of God. Amen? So how many of you know we've got to come against him in the name of Jesus? Amen? You know, you don't go chasing after the devil, but when he, comes and he, and when he comes and he breaks into your house, he's got no business in there. He's an intruder. You get him out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen? What about the word agape? A-G-A-P-E. Agape love, there's different words um, in the Bible uh, for love and so forth, but agape talks about the love that God has for you and I. It's an unconditional love. It's a love that he chooses to have irregardless of how you treat him. As Christians, we should love others irregardless of how they choose to treat us. Amen. And when that's happening, it's a, it's a reflection of God's love that you've already received, amen? And it's a reflection that you're giving back to somebody else. Amen? Praise God. See, agape love is not primarily a feeling. God would not command a feeling. Love is primarily an action. Love is giving of oneself to another. Feelings follow action. Feelings are their fruits... Listen to this. Feelings are their fruit, not the root of love. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. So feelings are the fruit, not the root. You can, never have, you can never have oranges unless you plant seeds in order to have an orange tree. It's got to develop roots before this fruit. Too many Christians are looking for the fruit without the root. And yet Jesus tells us in the Word of God, in, in Matthew chapter 7, amen, to build upon a strong foundation, that is to build your life upon Jesus Christ. What is that talking about? That's talking about you put God first in everything in your life. That way when you have losses and people die that, that are very close to you, or you lose your job, or something bad happens, or whatever the case is, you've, already, you've been building a, upon a strong foundation. You're not going to crumble. When the storms in life come, that house is not going to fall over because it's been built only on sand and not upon rock. It's what we build upon every day when things are good to determine when things are bad, how we're going to react to that. Amen? Does God allow us to go through trials? Of course he does. In those trials, we should be strengthened in the Lord because we're building upon the rock. 
Amen? It should be a constant reminder. You're building upon sand. Get rid of the sand. Stop building a foundation. Amen? You can't build upon self. Self can't get you out of a bind. Jesus can. Amen? So we have to start, we have to build upon the Lord. He is the foundation of our lives. He's the cornerstone. Amen? You take him, you know, that's why. We were all created. Every single one of us that were physically born were created by God. Now, if we don't know the one who created us, or if I can use the term, the one who manufactured us, you're going to be in a heap of trouble when something goes wrong. I have a refrigerator at home. And if that refrigerator, if there was something wrong with it, and if the refrigerator had the ability to make a cell phone call to Whirlpool, the manufacturer of the refrigerator, and to say, creator, the one who made me, could you please send a technician who has studied everything about me to fix me, please? Because I'm hurting. My refrigerator cannot fix itself. It's got to go to the manufacturer, the one who made it, in order for it to be fixed. People in the world we live in today don't know God as their personal Lord and Savior. They don't know Jesus. Things are crumbling and going bad in their lives, and they have no idea what to do. They're having nervous breakdowns. They're in mental institutions. They don't know what to do. They can't handle life. They're having panic attacks. They don't know. They have fears and phobias and everything else and withdrawing from relationships. They have no idea what the true meaning of life really is. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't know what life's about at all. You just don't know. Because you're broken and you try, you, 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 you got nobody to call because you don't know who made you. We didn't come from some amoeba or some chimpanzee that evolved. That is foolishness, thinking that way. What are you going to do when you break down? Go to a chimpanzee monkey at the zoo and look for help? <laughs> as stupid as that may sound. Or the atheist, who does he go to? He goes to self, but he finds quickly, I can't really fix myself. Amen? How many know you've got to know your manufacturer personally? You've got to know the God who created you. You've got to know your very purpose, why you were created. You've got to know all about his heart and how much he loves you unconditionally. You've got to know that Jesus Christ sacrifices his own life so that you and I could be, have a personal relationship with this awesome God. Yesterday, Agnes and I were doing devotion. We try to do devotions together each day and in the daily bread and so forth. And we were talking and... And, and, um, and how many of you know that it's, it's, it's we, we have to know and understand that we have to have a close relationship with God, and that's got to be a continuous, um, proactive relationship, amen, with the Lord. We have to continually grow in Him, amen. We can't say, well, Lord, you know, um, I'm going to just do things on my own and so forth. How many of you know life's all about trusting in God? It's all about relying on Him, amen. And when you think about it, Think about where you're going to go. Be he Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 says, Be heavenly minded, not earthly minded. Amen. You know, you can make the choices all you want in life. You don't have to believe in God if you don't want Him. Believe me. You don't have to believe in God just because I'm, I'm, I'm highly encouraging everybody that's watching me right now believing in God and having a personal relationship with Him. But let me tell you something. Where are you going to go when things go bad? Amen. I mean, the joy of the Lord. You can, you can go to bed at night and say, Lord, thank you so much for blessing me with another day. I pray, Lord, that I have a good night's sleep tonight. And when you wake up in the morning, you say, good morning, Lord. I pray that I can somehow and in some way be, be a minister to you today, Lord God. Help me to bless somebody. Help me to put me in a situation where I could do something for you today. Amen? But how many you know it's up to you and I in this relationship with God? He's an unseen God. As Agnes and I were talking about in that study, that, you know, if we stood before God the Father the way we are now, we'd drop dead right away. God can't stand sin. We're, we're sinful people, whether you're a Christian or not. Amen? In other words, we can't stand before God the Father. He's such a holy God, we would drop dead. That's why the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man. That is Christ Jesus. He's the mediator. He came from heaven in the form of a man, amen, on the earth so he could relate to us, amen? So he would be a mediator between God and us. 
So whenever, when, when, after we've received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, amen, we become born again, now God the Father looks down on us and he sees the Son's blood, Jesus. Now we have a relationship as a result of a supreme sacrifice who is Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? Now when you die and you go to be with the Lord, don't worry about it. You're not going to, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to just drop dead. You, you know, your spirit, praise God, you're all set. <laughs> Somebody say praise God, amen? But understand, like any other relationship, whether you're married, whether you have a relationship with the best friend, relationship with your kids, relationship with your parents, relationship with your grandparents, relationship with your coworkers, you are responsible to cultivate that relationship. You have a responsibility. The relationship's not going to be one way. If Jesus says, Craig, I want you to come to my house every Sunday morning and I want you to tell me how much you love me, I can't just skip out and stay home. Amen? How many of you know relationship, there's communication, very important? Somebody say communication. How's communication with God? You talk to Him every day. You pray every day, amen? Praise God. You read His love letter, the Bible. You see how much He loves you, amen? Tells you how to live. Lord, I got this problem with anxiety. What does your word say? My word says, Philippians chapter 4, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to me. And if you really, truly do that, I'm going to fill you with contentment. In fact, so much that I'm going to give you peace that passes all understanding. Amen? Amen? Lord, I'm not quite sure I can pay that bill next month. How am I going to get the mortgage payment paid? And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, don't worry about anything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And then he gives some pictures and he says, think about the flowers and the lilies of the field, how beautiful they are. And then the next day they're not so beautiful, but God makes them that beautiful. Think about, think about the birds of the air. Did they go around taking Prozac, being worried about everything all the time? God provides for them. Then he points out, but how much more important are you than God than those birds and those flowers? Do you think God's just going to blow you off and say, ah, I'm not going to take care of you, too bad. I know the Bible says I'm your Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides, but that's just tough. See you later. The only time that happens when we don't do our responsibilities, we get lazy. So we also, the Bible does say, too, that whatever we sow, we what? We reap. If I was starving to death, you went ahead and blessed me with a plate of food and say, here, Pastor Craig, I just want you to go ahead and fill your stomach. And I looked at it and said, thank you. And I still looked at it and said, thank you. Then I walked away from it and didn't take a fork and a knife and start eating it. You pray for me all you want. I was just stupid. The, the result of the prayer was right there, but I chose not to take it. Oh, he starved to death. He didn't eat. That poor guy. Let's pray for Pastor Craig. No, you've got to pray for some wisdom and so he's not stupid anymore. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen? Amen? So, you know, sometimes Christians, they go around, they get no responsibility whatsoever, and they think God's going to somehow do everything in their life. Yet God gives them the instruction, this is what I need you to do to have that happen, and they're not doing it. They're not putting what I call legs on your prayers. Faith without works is dead. Faith without, <laughs> faith without legs is dead. <laughs> Somebody say praise God. praise God. See, God works with us. Amen? He works with us. Amen? Praise God. God is such an awesome God. Amen? Church, how many know there are at least four reasons why we need to take our responsibility as encouragers very seriously? Number one, it is the urgent need of our day. Let me tell you something. There's so many people in the world today that are not encouraged, and there's nobody out there trying to encourage them. A lot of people think nobody cares about me, and I'm just going to go ahead and do my own thing, and that's that. That's why people become very bitter and unforgiving. Because they think, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me. And many times when you start reaching out to somebody, amen, they might start thinking, oh, what are you doing this for? And they start getting a little nervous. What do you want with me? Literally nothing. I want to see you blessed. Amen? How I many you know every single person, the, the, I mean, the Bible says that we are the light, the light of the world. If I could use the term small light, Jesus is the big light of the world. We're the small lights of the world. Amen? In Matthew chapter 5. 
And how many know this? It's a very dark world right now, and we need to be shining bright. If this church right now, amen, if, if, it, was, um, if it was 1 o'clock in the morning, 12 hours from now, it would be totally dark. And if I took a little flashlight or a little candle, and if I, if I lit it, that light would be very, very bright. Why? Because of the darkness around me. But if I lit the candle right now with light already in here, you don't see it that much. But as time goes on, the world seems to get darker and darker. Christians need to get lighter and brighter and brighter. Amen? Praise God. Number two, it's the unique priority of God. 2 Thessalonians 2.16 and 17 says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and, God and, um, and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Praise God. Thirdly, it is the underlying purpose of our Bible. How many know the Bible is all about encouraging one another in the things of God? Amen. Isn't that right? Some of us sometimes, you know, we get out in left field or whatever, and we start, you know, backsliding away from God, and, you know, we do it little by little by little, and we need that word of encouragement. We need that text message to come to church. We need that word of prayer. We need to go ahead and open up our hearts. And when, we need, when, we're, when we were sick or whatever the case is, we need to tell the believers so that we can be praying for one another and keeping, instead of keeping our mouths shut. Praise God. Amen? Amen? You know, I don't know how many people have come and left in this ministry that have never, ever sat down in my office with me and said, Pastor, I want to share my heart with you. I'm going through this problem. I'm going through the situation in my life. I need your prayers. I need your counsel. I need you to be there for me. But yet they leave, and then months later I found out, oh man, they were going through this, and they never even told me about it. How in the world was I supposed to pray if I never knew about it? How many Christians are keeping their mouths shut that need to open them up? And say, man, I, I, sister, brother, I know I can trust you. I'm going through the situation. I need you to pray for me. I need you to encourage me. And that's your ministry. Start texting them. Start calling them. Start praying for them. Start encouraging them to come to church. Start seeing them walking with the Lord. Start, start going ahead and going all out in the name of Jesus for their sake. Well, I got my own problems. Well, that's the problem. You're too focused on self instead of being focused on this lost and dying world. Amen? We're here for a reason. The purpose of the Bible is to encourage one another in the Lord. Number four, it is the uncommon per opportunity to begin a never-ending process. Praise be to God. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4 says, What a wonderful God we have. He is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of every mercy, and the one who so wonderfully comforts and strengthens us in our hardships and trials. And why does he do this? So that when others are troubled, needing our sympathy and encouragement, we can pass on to them this same help and comfort God has given us. When you and I go through a trial, down the road of you getting through that trial with the Lord, you see, when we go through things, we learn a lot. You can hear somebody's story, and you can hear the pain in their voice, but you don't know what they've went through unless you go through it yourself. You can sympathize with somebody and say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, I'll pray for you. And feel with them, their sadness and whatever they're going through. But if you've been through it, you can say, I empathize with you. I've been through that, I know exactly where you're at, I know exactly what you're feeling, I've been through the same thing. So when the devil comes at us to try to bring us down with some kind of a trial or whatever, God will take us through it, and then God's going to use that trial for you to minister to somebody else who is going through that same thing. And there'll be victory in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. How many of you know God's such an awesome God? You know something? God doesn't allow us to go through anything that he doesn't already know about. Amen? It's not an accident. Amen? Max Licato said, he said these words, Plant a word of love heart deep in a person's life. Nurture it with a smile and a prayer and watch what happens. I mean, a love is contagious. Encouragement is contagious. It's amazing when you encourage somebody else, they go out and they start encouraging other people. Amen? Isn't it great? Isn't it awesome? The encouragement that we can go ahead and we can, we can share with people. Amen? So church, I just want to 
you know, I want you to think about that word this week, that word encouragement. Let me ask you a question. Who are, they, who are you encouraging in your life right now? Amen? Who, are you, who could you encourage even this afternoon? Is there somebody that you know in your spirit is really hurting and you can have a word of encouragement? You can send an email or a text message or make a phone call or visit that person, whatever it might be, amen, and go ahead and try to bless them. There's people all over our lives that need encouragement, amen? Some people that we don't know what they're going through that need a word of encouragement, sometimes they commit suicide. Amen? It was a shock to the world when Robin Williams committed suicide. This was a guy who was a comedian, he was funny in all his movies and so forth. You would never, ever, 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 ever think that that man was suffering from depression. Amen? But yet, if you don't open up, see, whenever you open up something in your heart to another believer, it puts light on that darkness. And that's when the healing hand of God starts to react and starts to mend and heal that person. But if somebody says, well, I'm a Christian, I've been walking with the Lord for so long, what would that person think about me if I told them this about me? Oh, I can't do that. You're still in darkness concerning that sin, and it's going to continue. Amen? See, that's why we have to go ahead and say, you know, I have a prayer request. Can you pray for me? Can you encourage me? Can you be my accountability partner? And so forth and so on. Amen? It's very, very important. Amen? Let's stand to our feet and close in a word of prayer. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you, and I want to praise you and magnify your mighty name. Thank you for every person that's here today, those watching by television and internet, Lord, and YouTube. I pray, Lord God, that you would just bless this ministry, Father. We're here for you. We're here, Lord God, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're messengers, Lord God. And I pray that we give that message to people, the good news of salvation. I pray, Lord God, that the, uh, through this church will be a lighthouse into this community, into this even entire world, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to go ahead and minister to others. We just thank you, and we praise you, and we magnify your name. Lord, I want to come against every disease and every sickness that anybody is suffering right now in their body in the name of Jesus at Changing Lives Christian Church. I pray for your healing touch to be upon every single person, Lord God. Your word says, Jesus, that by your stripes we were healed. I want to pray, Lord God, because Lord, you sent your word to heal us, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name, if anybody is sick spiritually, Lord God, that you would have your healing hand upon them even right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, if anybody is sick emotionally, Lord God, in their soulish realm, that you would heal them as well, Lord God. God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that if anybody would need encouragement, they would receive that encouragement in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you would continually change the way we think, Lord God, because many times we're thinking about things that are distorted, not according to your word, yet your word says we have the mind of Christ. We thank you for that, Lord. We praise you for that, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord God, and Lord God, we just want to tell you we love you today. We praise you today. We worship you today. We, we, we just magnify you, Lord God. We want more and more people to to know you personally in a relationship with you and we ask this all in the mighty precious name of Jesus and all God's people said amen, amen and amen praise the name of the Lord hi I'm Craig Matheson pastor of Changing Lives Christian Church here in Haverhill Massachusetts just for a couple of minutes I just like to offer you a couple of free booklets being that you're viewing us today we just want to tell you we really appreciate you we thank you for watching our services on tele community television and on YouTube as well as through the internet through our website the first booklet I wrote just a little while ago is called, Are You Going to Heaven When You Die? This booklet explains the plan of salvation. It explains what the Bible says concerning having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible tells us over in the book of Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible tells us and encourages us to have that personal relationship with God. In fact, there's no way that we can get to heaven after we die without having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The second thing is, after we, have that, after we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we have that personal relationship with God, obviously we have to go ahead and cultivate that relationship. How do we do that? One of the very things that is very, very important is attending a local church. I wrote a second booklet called, Why Should I Go to Church? And I'd like to send you these two free booklets, postage paid. We're not going to put you on a mailing list or anything like that. We just want to simply get these booklets into your hands to be a blessing to you, being that you're viewing us here on television. You know, the whole purpose of Changing Lives Christian Church is to go ahead and preach the gospel to every creature, as the Bible says. 
to let everybody know about the good news about God, the good news about the plan of salvation, the good news about receiving Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Many people in the day we live in are looking for a purpose. What is the purpose in life? How come I get this empty feeling deep down within my soul? How come I, give, I can't seem to have that joy that I've always longed to have? The only way we're going to have that is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I just want to give you some, that good news, and I want to offer you these two free booklets that I've written, postage paid. We feel led of the Lord to do this at this particular time in our ministry. And you can request these booklets three different ways. Number one, you can either send us a letter, Changing Lives Christian Church, 17 Newcomb Street, Haverhill, Massachusetts. The zip code here is 01830. Or you can email us, very simply, at info at changinglivesChristianChurch.com. Or you can just give us a call at 978-373-7373. And if you get the voicemail, just leave your name and address, and we'll be sure that we send these booklets out to you as soon as possible. Are you going to heaven when you die? A challenging question. And this is a booklet, How to Get to Heaven According to the Word of God, According to the Bible. Secondly, why should I go to church? May God bless you, and I pray that you have a fantastic day.